Hey, Steve Mignani here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts, doing a high octane walk around with a 1966 Chevrolet Malibu Supersport 396. Now, everybody remembers the 60s, the Pontiac GTO, the Plymouth Roadrunner. Well, of course, Chevrolet was in there swinging with the SS 396 Chevelle or Malibu. And the mighty dynasty started right here in 1966. Now, you gotta remember, 1965, there were 201 Malibus built with 396, 396 engines. They were called Z16s, and they're not quite the same thing as the mass-produced 66 Up SS 396. Now, one thing about the SS 396 is that it is based on the Chevelle, the Malibu platform, hard top only, also convertible only, uh, no four doors, no station wagons at this point in time. What these all have is the special super sport hood seen only on the SS. 396. And once again, don't look for a four-door or a station wagon, although decades later, in the 1990s, the Chevy Impala SS was available as a four-door only. But again, that was 30 years down the line from this car here. And again, the beautiful two-door hardtop body style on these with the flying buttress rear quarter panel. Uh, the B pillar seen here, and the flying buttress refers to a, a buttress being a vertical support or a diagonal support that's moving through the air with sort of a, a hollowed out region behind the window. And I gotta say, if you like your 68 up Dodge Charger, <clears throat> you can probably rest assured that Dodge stylists took a good look at that and perhaps paid tribute to it. Just saying. Of course, at the back of every SS 396, the hallowed numbers and letters right here, which tell the guy in the Roadrunner or the Fairlane GT behind, be careful, there's a 396 under the hood. And before we get to the hood, let's open the other end of this one and have a look in the trunk. And here we see here, nice big trunk compartment on this one, properly presented with the Zola tone on the horizontal <coughs> surfaces and certain vertical surfaces, but again, this is the GM treatment they would have had for sure. The underside of the trunk painted to match the body. <coughs> and then something interesting too, we mentioned you know, the, uh, the nomenclature, the badges, the emblems from the basic Chevelle 300 two-door sedan to the wagon to all those cars. Each one got its own metallic emblem. And in fact, this is a factory service manual. This thing right here, copy thereof. And then see right here, this is the factory engineering drawing here of the left front fender. And notice the different emblems right here for the six cylinder, the SS 396, and each of these things had a unique set of holes that had to be punched in just the right place in just the right way. So one of the problems people get into today is when they add the SS stuff to non-SS cars, they drill the holes in the wrong place and puts the emblem in the wrong location. But this one here is properly done. Let's take a look under the hood at that mighty 396. And speaking of those 396 fender emblems that we saw in the factory manual, here they are in the flesh or in the metal. And again, 396 refers to the 396 cubic inch displacement of the big block. Turbojet was Chevrolet's term for their big block power plant. And of course, the cross flags here, a Chevrolet uh, marketing thing since the 1950s, 1955 in particular. And of course, here's that crazy hood. And the hood doesn't really do anything. I can't say that these things have articulated flappers or doors or duct air but one thing they did really well and still do is sell the heck out of Chevelle SS's. Very cool stuff. Let's pop this hood and have a look. So we got. And there it is. Now this, of course, is the Chevrolet Big Block, which, of course, refers to its larger size than the small block, which, of course, would be seen in 1955 as the 265, the 283, the 327, the 350, the 400, etc. Meanwhile, the Big Block is physically larger and a very different engine. Uh, whereas the small blocks have inline valves and small ur ports, they're fine. The big block was actually born for high RPM breathing, and the valves are actually inclined toward the center line of the cylinder bore. It's known as a porcupine engine, but this is the big block, and this is the engine that you really wanted if you want ultimate muscle out of the hood. These were also later built as 427s and 454s, and in the catalog is a 502, but this is the 396, a very strong general purpose high performance engine. And this one here has the aluminum intake from Edelbrock, a classic day two add-on performer RPM. That's the dual plane. Got a small Holly four barrel. And when I say small, we're talking 700 CFM, which is totally enough. A big Holly four barrel would be a dominator with a thousand CFM seen in NASCAR. But again, when I say small, it's not a small carburetor. It's just a smartly sized carburetor. This one does have steel tube headers. 
So plenty of power going on here. Okay, now we have to know what's behind this big block. What kind of a transmission? To find out, we'll go inside. Yeah, inside this first year SS-386, we see everything we need to see. The, the bench seat is standard equipment. Believe it or not, you paid extra for the straddle bucket seats and center console. But for this one here, believe it or not, this bench seat is actually lighter than two buckets would be. So for maximum acceleration and uh, the best power to weight ratio, you really want to see the bench. Good to see the four-speed manual transmission. That's a major plus. Nothing connects the driver to the big block but on the other side of the firewall, like a four-speed, this is a Muncie four-speed with the factory chrome ball, the reverse lockout right here, all of this very correct stuff. And we see here, of course, on this side of the dash, Super Sport right there, which was standard only on the SS396. So very correct and presented. Now, the one thing we see here that's an aftermarket goodie is the auto gauge tachometer at the center of the steering column. That's a good thing because in 1966, the factory tachometer was about as big as a nickel. Very hard to read in the heat of battle and easy enough to miss a gear with that tiny gauge moving and your eyes are distracted so an aftermarket attack like that one is a major plus so here it is the first year chevelle malibu ss 396 it's super sport only hood open and ready to devour a fairlane 390 gt a 3d3 roadrunner you name it these were some of the fiercest muscle cars on the street back in 1966 when they first came out now to learn more about this car here check it out on the high octane classics website